Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cobb. This is Numkin, asleep on my desk, and I'm gonna do my best not to wake her as we enter into this just incredible carry Vulcan game. Submit by Mr. Crag, as you can well see. Now, Mr. Crag is playing a little bit of Fortified Specialist. This game is kind of unique in the fact... Oh my god, okay, I didn't know the blue one for such an aggressive opener, but there we go. Um, this game's kind of unique because it's like 1800 MMR, which is really damn good to be pulling off memes, is all I'm saying, you know? So... Whatever happens, this game somehow ends up demanding carry Vulcans. Let's just see how it pans out. Now, very, very central formation coming out from Crag. Actually, we've got like a central Maxman over here as well, which is something I'm trying to stop doing in my own games uh, recently. Just because if your opponent also goes for standard, it kind of makes it a bit tough to protect your middle Maxman, but it's going to work out here uh, just because Blue rushing down one side with the aggressive sledgehammers. Also, Blue looks to be playing elite specialist as well, and so it is going to be tough for us to bring down uh, these crawlers in this opening round. They're going to start to break up on the sledgehammers like water on rock. Meanwhile, we, of course, have the fangs poking down the building, so it should be a W for Crag on red here with his legions of Maxman now basically one-shotting uh, the sledges and the building debuff. And that's going to be all she wrote, man. So, decent start. Not getting caught out too hard uh, by the aggressive opener. Yeah, whenever I play Sledgehammers, I don't know. I like to have a very, very central formation as well, man. It's how I like to play the game, you know? I just feel like they're so slow <laughs> that you want them to be able to respond to either side uh, without having to move too far. Next up, we've got Scorpions available for both players here. And with um, Sledgehammers on the field, on both sides of the field, I'd imagine we'd see at least one Scorpion pick come out. That said, Fire Badger is just amazing. Okay, yeah, so Fire Badger comes out for blue. Fire Badger is just, it just means you just don't have to worry about the uh, Chaff Clear side of things anymore. You pick up a couple copies of Fire Badger and you're kind of good to go. Crag on red is still deciding. He actually opts into the Scorpion after all. Okay. Yeah, the Scorpion makes it so that the Sledgehammers basically don't exist. Um, that's it, you know? <laughs> and hey man, most of y'all know by now that I actually run a few channels here on YouTube. We've got a WoW channel and a goddamn Raid Shadow Legends channel. Which hey, that wasn't exactly my bingo card for 2024 either, but it does mean that I have a promo link for Raid linked down below at the top of the video description box. And if you click on that link and sign up to Raid, it is the best possible way that you can help to support me staying full time here on YouTube and keep the casts coming. So click that link, sign up to Raid. It actually starts off a new Raid account with a whole bunch of free starting stuff, including the free Epic Champion and all that kind of stuff. It's just an all round awesome way to get started in the game it takes you 60 seconds to sign up and is completely free and it really helps me out a hell of a lot so thanks so so much to anybody who does decide to take the time to do that okay man back to it okay and meanwhile blue is just gonna double down on the super super aggressive strats that he's going for i tell you what i can see already how a vulcan pickup could be pretty solid here uh for crag simply because you've got so many blue crawlers on the field this is a lot of blue crawler experience that you should be funneling into a vulcan um, with the Scorpions to take care of the heavier units, it's all coming together, man. I'm liking how this one's shaping out. Okay, so everyone spent all cash already. There it is. Oh, God. Okay. No effort from Blue to uh, defend the Sledgehammers here, who are just frontlining against the Scorpion. I thought maybe we might see like a little blob of chaff come out or something, just preempting the Scorpion pick come out. And so now it wouldn't surprise me. Oh my god, that's where the Fire Badgers went. I was actually about to say, what the hell happened to the Fire Badgers, man? The Fire Badgers are now flanking Badgers. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. Seems a little bit odd. <laughs> but hey, what the hell do I know, man? I'm a measly 1500 player, you know? These 1800 gigabrain wrinkle... wrinkle brain giga chads. I mixed that up. No, far better than I do, you know. Let's go ahead, speed things along. We are going to hold on to a win here on the second round as well. Looking pretty good. Even if our Maxman do die screaming, hollering, just begging for mercy. At least our Sledgehammers are going to get the job done. There it is. There should be another level on these guys as well. Nice. Level 1 Sledges get to go up. Okay. But yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if Blue sold his Sledgehammers here. Or at least was considering selling them in future rounds. We get the laser sights come out quite early on. Um... God, I'm trying to think of what to go for blue here. Intensive training uh, for Crag. It's quite interesting. Redeployment from blue. Okay, so he's going to run these guys away, right? Get these guys out of dodge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, hang on. Oh my god, okay, they're also up on the flank. So yeah, this is something that you see quite commonly. Or at least when I'm playing like an aggressive strat and it's uh, not quite working out. Honestly, even if it is working out and it's doing okay, I find that rounds two and three... Uh, that's what I'm considering dropping crap on the flank, you know, like a tarantula and some crawlers or something. 
just something to really throw a wrench in the works, or if my opponent has backline chaff, um, you just place anything up here to like pull the chaff away, you know, and give his guys less cover uh, on the front. Um, so yeah, the flanking plays from an aggro player. Definitely something to be wary of. And ooh, the other pack of Sledgehammers actually does get sold off. So it's a move and a sell. Okay, it's even more of a pivot away from the Sledges than I was first expecting. Nothing else going on in the flank, so we can zoom in just a little bit. And now suddenly the Scorpion is not looking like a great unit. Honestly, man, for any beginner players out there, you know... Say if you're under like, I don't know, like 1100 or something, anywhere below that kind of range, just try a few games where the rule is from round three and onwards, you have to sell one unit every round. You'd be surprised at how quickly you can kind of bend your army to no longer be getting countered uh, by your opponent, man. It's just a cool little experiment to do to get used to selling units and, um, and getting a read on your opponent's army and look at what your opponent is trying to counter, then sell that unit and pivot and pivot and pivot again, you know, for like a few rounds. Uh, and just see where you end up. It's a good way to learn, man. Okay. So the Scorpion is still going to find a good amount of value. Just absolutely people's elbowing. Uh, the Sledgies that come in from a distance. Interestingly, we've just allowed the uh, Fire Badges to come in again. And just kill the building over here with just one building level on that. Uh, they're just kind of uh, negligible at this point. And oh my god, here we go. Well, it's a skip from blue. I think we all know what's coming down here, man. Crag, he can't believe it. He's just bewildered by his by his look. We're going to start to sell stuff off. Okay, so the Scorpion does get sold off. That's what I'm talking about, man. Okay, so even though we're going to extended Vulcan range, we're not going to go mental with it just yet. Okay, man. Okay. But, I mean, he's got to be thinking about it. With the amount of chaff on the... What's this, actually? It's just an entire army of chaff. The other sledges have been sold off now by Blue as well. He can redeploy. I'm guessing we're going to see a redeploy on these guys. Probably. But where would he put them? Oh my god. Dude, Blue is an absolute madman. He's just going for more fangs. Okay. This has got to be like a fortress pivot or something. It's got to be. This is going to be like carry style fangs. Fortress. Hackers. Mass hacker shields. This used to be a thing. Um, spam like a huge front line of hackers. Uh, and just run carry fangs or carry mustangs. And it could work uh, just fine. It was very, very difficult to counter for a time. And the hackers would work... Uh, the hackers and the sledgehammers. Uh, sorry. Hackers and fortresses would work good against the uh, sledgehammer heavy lineup. That we have going on over here though. Which I really appreciate the amount of sledgehammers we've seen come out from Craig by the way. It's good stuff. I love it. Sledgehammers oftentimes getting a little bit crapped on. Since the... Uh, since the age of the tarantula dawned. You know. People talk about... Oh man, sledgehammers. They're just worse tarantulas, man. They're no good, you know. Well, Craig disagrees. Then again, maybe he shouldn't disagree. How the hell did his blue tanks lose to this? It was like one pocket of chaff and a bunch of fire badges and they just they just win against the sledgehammers, dude. They're making me eat my words, man. <laughs> well, I'm still a believer in the sledges, man. I still think that they have a, a pretty solid place. But yeah, the tarantula has had this strange effect of like um, replacing sledgehammers in a lot of sort of army comps and stuff. I'm not sure I appreciate it that much. Sledgehammers actually feel like a more niche unit now, whereas before they actually feel, uh, felt more like a catch-all. Uh, that were kind of decent against everything on the ground. Whereas Tarantulas are just so much better at killing chaff uh, than the Sledgies that they kind of just eke them out in most situations. Anyways, man. Senior Defense Specialist comes up. Lightning Storm Relief. I mean, Senior Defense is expensive, especially if you're wanting to do this. Oh my god. Okay, it's going to be the hacker build that we were just talking about. Okay, so meanwhile, these are max range, not max range, but extended range Vulcans, which, don't forget, it also increases the damage, uh, the attack damage of the Vulcan by 50% as well. Does make them squishier with only 30k HP at level 1, so we are going to have to win uh, this battle against the hackers' barriers and get these guys dead. Or the hacks will come out very, very quickly against these guys, and oh my god. We actually go into the extended range immediately after a sell on something. I'm not sure what it was that we sold there. Um, actually, just... I mean, I just missed it. A little bit of building health on the back line. Oh, we're borrowing money too? What's this? Okay. The field maintenance sledgehammers. I mean, they do do very, very well into just a mass chaff army. That said, that will not be enough to stop the hackers getting the latches on these guys and getting them uh, stolen. Ooh. 
The Vulcans have a lot to do here, man. These are level 2 hackers, so what, the shield health is 40k on each of these hackers? Or am I crazy? Increases by 20,000 per unit rank increase. Dude, I didn't realize the hacker barriers were that big. So rank 2 hacker has 40k shield health? Am I understanding that correctly? That's kind of gnarly. That's kind of naughty, man. Well, the Vulcans definitely have the work cut out for them then. Let's see how this develops. Okay. The, su the longer it takes the Vulcan to latch on the hacker, the better. So the crawlers are pushing forward quite nicely. The fangs actually have mech rage, so they've still got a crazy amount of move speed and they're going to push in front of the hackers, which is really, really bad news for them. But as soon as the fangs get range enhancement, which I'm guessing we're going to see come out next round so that they stay under the barrier, then we might have a little bit of problem. A little bit of problem. A little bit of problems here. Some problems here to deal with. We've also got the issue of if a tank gets stolen um, by blue... The Vulcans actually can't kill it through the armor. <laughs> yet. Anyway, yet. Okay. So we are getting all kinds of Vulcans stolen over here as well. This guy is also not long for this world. As soon as that building dies, it's going to get hacked. Pronto. Which is not ideal. But the building's also about to drop as a result. Okay, so we run Scorching Fire. Armor enhancement on your Vulcans? Crag. Explain yourself. I feel like Vulcan kills everything that uh, that has its damage negated by armor enhancement, if that makes sense, you know? But hey, once again, I'm a lowly worm. I'm a maggot. I'm a larvae of a Mechabellum player. Looking to learn from Giga Chads like Crag. Goes for the Overlords. Was that a sell on one of them instantly? Okay, one of them sold. One of them placed on the flank. I like this. It's a very, very sudden pivot. Um, that blue is obviously... Blue obviously feels like he's got your attention on the front line, so I like this. It's quite risky. Um, but I think that now is a good time to be taking risks like this. Throw that curve ball. There goes the enhanced range on the fangs as well. Okay, man. So we've got a lot to do here. The Vulcans do get all kinds of levels, and the Scorching Fire comes down as well. Meanwhile, blue also went for the Overlords, however, and he's going to start to flank on the sides as well. And we only have three maximum with any real hope of bringing those overlords down. This could get a little bit sketch. This could be bad, man. Okay, so I'm just going to imagine... I, I, mean, I, I want to stay somewhat zoomed in on the fight. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just ignore... We, we, we know that this overlord's coming. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to just try and capture what happens on the front line more than anything. But we know that that building will go down eventually in the bottom left, which will be a brief reprieve. It should also... We should get the building kill in the bottom left down here before blue gets the building kill up here. That's the most important thing, right? So the Vulcan's absolutely just torching everybody right now. Even though the fangs are kind of safe under the barriers, the Vulcan's are doing it. Ooh, the Overlords actually lock onto the Vulcans instead of the buildings. That is a big, big deal. That's a big deal, man. They're going to take so long. Finally, now this building is going to start to get chunked down, but at what cost? Most of the army is kind of dead already. Ooh, we might get this Vulcan stolen over here, man. Oh, I think it's going to get stolen, dude. Oh, my God. Okay, that was real tight. That was real close. Now, sadly, we don't have a single um, Maximin left alive. So, our one Overlord over here does have quite a lot to do. Are we going to get pretty lucky here with, like, building kill timing? Oh, my God. It's going to work out quite good. Everything's coming together just as the building dies here. So, this is one guy dead instantly. Meanwhile, the tanks just have to be alive. Just to be a distraction against this guy. Oh my god, they both live on just zero health, which actually makes all the difference in the world and turns that into a round win. Oh my god, dude, those tanks. Heroes, dude. Heroes. Build the monuments now. Mass produce scorpion, mass produce wasp. Incendiary bot. I mean, it's no, like, nah. Nothing here is looking great. Yeah, I agree with blue, man. I think this is just a skip. Yeah. Okay. Levels available in the overlords. Oh. Curious to see. I'm guessing that we're going to sell this overlord down at the bottom. It's probably of no use to us quite anymore. Both Vulcans now at level 3. Ooh, this guy was like a millimeter of experience away. Okay. Oh, we actually sell the tanks over here and just grab the melting point. That's fair. Ooh. And then Blue comes in with the cell, dude. Oh my god. That's just cruel, man. That's just cruel, dude. 
Oi, 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 oi. So the armor actually comes out in our Vulcans as well. It does increase the HP by 50%. I just worry that that 50% has already been devalued because of the fact that we went extended range Vulcan, which reduces your max health by 30%. And so, eh. How much are you really increasing it by at that point, you know? Ideally, nothing ever gets near these guys. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Look at the levels on these fangs, dude. These fangs are not plain. Just a little legion of Jocko Willinks over here, man. <laughs> okay. Dude, are we actually going to leave this here? Is that the plan? We're setting it up against a whole bunch of fangs over here. Okay. Meanwhile, the hacker line is getting quite strong. The overlord gets pulled off of the flank and dropped onto the front line. And all right, man. Here we go. Gonna have to try and capture all this now because we've got to see how this Vulcan does in the bottom left as well against these fangs. God, it might actually just die to the men. Oh, no, never mind. Some of them have actually just, like, neglected their duties and have just ran away. Meanwhile, the Vulcans annihilating the tanks as soon as they get hacked. That's great. The Overlord is about to die in the bottom left here, man. Oh, my God. Okay, no, it's not. Actually, it still has a reasonable amount of health left. Meanwhile, the melting point itself gets stolen. We lose the Vulcan as well at the same time. And now it's just up to one Chungus and his melting point friend over here. Actually, just the three Stooges, we'll call them. To take on really quite the horde. That said, not impossible. This Vulcan's range is unbelievable, but the melting point does not have range. And so the biggest risk here is that the melting point gets hacked very, very quickly indeed. As soon as these guys get into range, the barrier is going to start. Oh my god, it just dies to the level 2 overlord. I didn't realize it was that low health, but there you do go. And now suddenly it's a very, very tall ask indeed for this overlord to get this done against the blue overlord. Oh, the plus armor and the additional health buying us a little bit of time over here, but alas, it's not quite going to be enough, and just one shot is going to bring down the last of his kind, the mammoth of an overlord. The craggy and mammoth, we'll call it. Screaming as it goes down. Um, this looks like maybe a lot of rubbish. Stormcaller? Stormcaller's for, um, for red, maybe? Just, like, crack the hell out of those uh, hacker shields, like, instantly. Perhaps. Rhino's obviously off the table. Oh, my God. Okay, it's going to be Rhino Cell. It's going to be Rhino Cell, right? Oh, my God, dude. You absolute madman. No way you're actually running this. Is this, is this going to work? What if it just gets hacked? I mean, it will, it'll get one guy dead. But surely that thing is getting hacked. Okay. I love this, by the way, the melting point pickup. Lovely. Good. In fact, hang on. It's a level 7 rhino. Okay. It won't get hacked, will it? If it does get hacked, it'll be like 2% health left or something. It's gonna get a hell of a lot done. I take it back, man. It's a level 7 rhino going up against level 3 hacker and a couple of level 2s. It should actually get quite a lot done, to be honest. But yeah, I love this melting point pickup. The Electromag Barrage. You kind of know that more hackers are coming down at this point. Um... Yeah, these guys are going to be absolutely pivotal for just eviscerating the hell out of these shields. That's it. Look at the plus damage on the fangs coming out, man. Oh my god, dude. This is making me nostalgic. I haven't seen a build like this for a long time. Meanwhile, the Overlord is gone from this bottom side now, by the way. Just in case anybody was wondering. And here we go, man. Let's see what the Rhino gets done over here. Ooh, it gets clipped with a missile instantly. Okay, that's actually devastating. Oh my god, I didn't even see the missile placement. That wasn't paying no goddamn attention to that. And now, sadly, we are going to have to put down our own Rhino with a couple of melting points. Oi, 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 oi. Might have been better off just picking up the cash for all that. Big Electromag hits coming out. Only a couple of hackers left alive, but look at the damage on these fangs now. As soon as they get to connect, it's just a stupendous, stupendous amount of damage coming in. Sadly, we're going to lose the melting point over here on this side before it gets that Overlord dead. And now it's the one Vulcan. Oh! Against the world. And the world is losing. That's how much of a chad this guy is. Sadly, we are out of anti-air units. However, Numpkin, get, get, leave the chicken alone, okay? You gotta eat cat food. I don't want you to get fat. She's already quite fat, man. I feel bad, but chicken's got like all kinds of garlic on it. Garlic, not good for cats, man. It's completely unrelated to this Mechabellum game that we're watching right now. How is this guy aggroing on the tower, bro? <laughs> Do you not check his wing mirrors? Oh my god, dude. The clock is ticking. Okay, it does get the Vulcan dead with five seconds to spare. Almost a bit of a disaster there for Blue. 
Orbital Javelin becomes available. Why did I say it like that, man? I don't know, because it's funny. Sims pronouncing it Macabellum instead of Macabellum. Stupid things like that amuse me. Okay. Super Heavy Armor comes out for Craig because at this point he's completely possessed of the memes. And to be fair, Super Heavy Armor on like one of these guys. Or like one of these guys over here. Oh, he actually puts it on the Chungus. <laughs> Why? Did no. No, dude. Okay, so we put the armor on the Chungus for the memes. Giving us a half million health uh, Vulcan. Level 6 Vulcan. Just absolute Chad over here. That's great. That's awesome. However, I can't help but think... That, you know, the heavy armor on one of the um, uh, melting points. I guess this melting point and then upgrade this guy to level 2. And that way nothing here can die to a javelin. Same thing on this side. Like, level this guy up. And then plop the armor on this guy and then none of them die to the javelin, you know? Is what I'd be thinking. But, that said, I respect this player way more. What is going on with Blue over here, man? Look at how many hackers he has down to this stage. We also sell off the Rhino over here now as well. Okay, man, I think we're set. I think we're good to go. I think we're ready to full send it. Let's see, man. So this Vulcan is, of course, going to survive this. That's fine. I wonder if this Javelin would also catch the melting point here. I mean, there's a little bit of blue a overlapping a little bit of the green here. I don't know if that's going to count as a hit. We're going to know very soon. Ooh. Just, just shaved off its toenail a little bit. That's about that. Meanwhile, the Vulcan on the left side, he's going to get a hack latch engaged on it immediately, which is a little bit spooky. Every one of these Vulcans that we lose now is a massive, massive Chad to lose. And it looks like it is actually going to get hacked uh, on this left side. Meanwhile, the right side be clearing things up just a little bit faster. But there it goes, man. One Vulcan stolen. It's going to turn around. It's going to look at the melting point for one second and burn it down enough so that it has been hacked instantly. Now with the building dead. Oh my god, dude. It's turning its own guns against us. And things are suddenly looking quite spooky. Do we have what it takes for this? What health are these? Oh, never mind. Oh. Oh my god. Okay. Everything's still quite healthy on this right side. I think that the big Chungus Vulcan is gonna... Oh my god, as the building dies, this guy is just gonna utterly eviscerate its brother in arms. Putting him down, man. Like goddamn, like goddamn Solid Snake putting down Liquid, you know? They're both of a similar kin, but there can only be one. Eviscerate, nobody got that reference. No, surely everybody played Metal Gear Solid 1. What am I talking about? That's an absolute classic. Anyways, Laser Sights comes out. It's actually picked up by blue, but not by red. Okay. I would have thought that maybe, like, this uh, level 2 Vulcan here deserved a Laser Sights. But what do I know? I'd be quite disappointed if we don't somehow get Ignite here. We sold something. Borrow money and get Ignite. Come on, man, Craig. Oh, you've got exactly 800 supply. You can do it, man. No, no, what did we buy just now? Oh, we just bought a melting point. God damn it. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not quite uh, max deck Vulcans. By the way, the Ignite wouldn't actually have done anything. Like, it's not like it's it's good. It just would have been funny. Um, Yeah, I don't think I even needed to explain that. But but that's the rule on this channel, man. Rule of cool. Um, Yeah, it's just a lot of levels coming out on the hackers. On, on blue, as far as I can tell. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, does that actually work? Does that actually work when you load in your nerds? Oh yeah, it does. What am I talking about? Okay. I'm just talking nonsense for a moment. Let's get into this final round and see what we got here. Vulcan now rank 7 on the right side, rank 5 on the left. And so in this Vulcan is actually General Crag himself. Just screaming orders to his army. And it's going to be utterly, utterly glorious. Now, sadly, the melting points are going to turn around and be distracted by crawlers there on the back. That's deeply, deeply unfortunate. Meanwhile, the melting points... Just annihilating the shields and the barriers. It looks utterly amazing. <laughs> okay, man. But here comes the crawlers on the back line. Some of the crawlers are also going to start to wander in over here. They are going to take aggro on the Vulcans, I think. I think the Vulcans will turn around and start to look at the crawlers. Ooh... Oh, we might be in for a hack here on the left side. Or not. He's going to save himself. And I think the damage on the Vulcans is just way too much now. Yeah, it's just way too much. The electromagnetic shots coming in from the... Look at the victory that we actually win in the end, man. Oh my god. Okay. That's it. 
How much damage is this? Our opponent was on like 1600 health, so just a 3600 damage conclusion. And there you have it. But you know what, man? I do wonder if Blue... I actually can't replay this round to test this because Blue doesn't have the tech. But I'm looking at the shield uh, that he's running on the fangs. I just wonder if instead of like armor piercing bullets or the shield on these fangs, there was a ignite instead such that these fangs could actually do some serious percentage based damage uh, to these big big giant units you know then again that can change everything right because if there's ignite available on the fangs maybe craig sees that and he doesn't build i don't know a six hundred thousand health vulcan <laughs> so maybe it changes everything right from the offset you know but it would be really really cool to see either which way hope you guys did enjoy this one Thanks for stopping by. If you do enjoy the casts on this channel and you want to help support them, then make sure to click on the Raid Shadow Legends promo link down below at the top of the video description and sign up, man. It's completely free. My promo link directly helps to support me staying full-time here on YouTube. So massive, massive thank you to anybody who does decide to hit that link and sign up. It takes like 60 seconds of your time and makes a huge, huge difference to me. So there you go, man. Thanks for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your night. I'm going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later, man.